how to create automated workflows with N8N. Hi, welcome to LSTO. Today I will give you a quick tour of the automation platform N8N. Together we will create your first customized workflow very easily. We will connect form submissions from Typeform, process the data and post Slack messages based on the answers. There are multiple ways for you to get started with N8N. So either you can use the cloud solution which offers a free trial. There is the self-hosted version so you install it using Docker locally. Or you can use the desktop app. And us what we are going to do is to use LSTO and the main benefits you will get from doing Doing so is that you will have automatic backups and updates. So let's start by connecting to LSTO, hit create a new service and let's search an ADN. We can keep the default settings and hit next and create service. We should receive an email as soon as the service is deployed. Okay, so I just received the email to tell me that my new instance is ready. So I can have the access here. I will copy the password and go to my instance. So username is always root and I paste my password. Okay, I can save it. Now it's the first time I open it. So it, it asks me if I want to create an NADN account, but I will skip it, skip setup, and I will just hit continue. So I arrived on my own instance. Okay, let's zoom a little bit. Before creating our own workflow, let's browse templates and see what we have. So it's divided into multiple categories. For example, development, and you can create both. You have integration between GitHub and Slack, GitHub and GitHub. You have many integrations ready for you to use. And when you use a template, you can configure it the way you create your own workflow. So don't worry using one template that is not exactly what you need. So let's go back to workflow and create our own. We won't start by the type form, but with the Slack integration, to just send a message. So Slack and message, send a message. You can see we have many options available here, but we will focus on this. So we need to have credentials to be allowed to use our Slack account. So we'll hit create new credential. And what is very great with NADN is they have the documentation to explain how to get the key every time. Okay, so they tell me open the Slack API page, create an app, then I have to create it. So create an app from scratch. I will name it demo N810. I select my workspace and create app. Then they say go to app credentials and copy paste client ID and client secret. So I have client ID here. And client secret here. Okay, now go building apps for Slack, add features and functionality permissions. So here it is, permissions. And I have to add a redirect URL. So I copy it from here and I add it here. And I save. Now I have to go to the scopes section and add bot token scopes. Okay, so me, I want to write, so I just allow it to write messages. Now I will try to connect my account and I have it so I can allow it. And now I see I have a connection between N810 and this Slack account. Okay, so here I have my Slack account. By the way, I can click here and name it the way I want. If I have multiple accounts, it's very useful. So what we want to do is to send a message. We can select a channel. So me, I created a channel named demo N810. I will send a text message. Hello, test N810. Now we execute it. If we open Slack, we can see hello test N810. So it worked correctly. Okay, now let's do the same for Typeform integration. So add Typeform trigger. So it's when we have an event from Typeform, we will execute an action. So we don't have credentials yet, so we will follow the same. So open documentation. They say create a Typeform account. They tell us where to go. And there's even a video here to show us exactly what to do. Okay, so I hit generate a new token, N810, all scopes, I don't mind. And I copy it. I go back to N810, access token, and I paste it. So it says 
test successfully so it has the correct access. So we'll select this form, hit listen for event. So now it's asking us to fill the form so it has data to be able to map it. So let's do it. Okay, so let's fill it. Would you recommend? Yes. It's a very good. John Doe. Okay. And thank you. So now let's go. And here it got my answers from uh, the type form. Now I go back to Canvas. And here, instead of having a manual workflow, we will delete it and we will branch our type form. We will connect our type form to our Slack. So here we can grab the dots and link it here. So now when we have a message, it's connected to Slack. But no, we don't want to connect to Slack. We want to add a if condition and we will connect them together. And then based on the answer, we will send a different message. So here we add a condition, which is a string. So if would you recommend our app, we can drag and drop in the field. If it is yes, then our condition is true. So let's try it. It will execute this um, previous input to our if, and it's going into the true branch. So it's working. And now if it's true, we will send a message with lack. And what is great, it's, it's getting the values that are forward from type form to the if branch to our Slack. So here, instead of writing a raw message like this, we will write an expression. So let's open it. As it's yes, we will say, congrats, Tim. We had a new good review from, and we can add data. So it's first name. So it's JSON first name. And you can see the live preview here. So we can copy it and put a last name. So we got, we had a new good review from John Do. Please, thanks our user soon. And we will add its details. So um, let's drag everything, the email, the phone number, and the reason. Okay, perfect. So now we can close it and here we have it. So we can try to execute the node. And now we have the message that we formatted that is going into our Slack. Now let's add a second uh, message. So we will duplicate the good message and we will modify the message a little bit. So, oh team, we had a bad review from, please contact our user soon to make it better. And we will close it. But here it's uh, showing me errors because I didn't connect it. So it has no data to preview, but it will work. So here we can connect it, but it, it doesn't have uh, false data yet. So we don't have it yet. But here we will write bad review message to have more visibility in our workflow. And here, good review message. Perfect. Now let's try it. So what we have to do is to hit active here. Okay, got it. And now we will fill in the form again. Would you recommend no? It's a very bad app. Okay, so now we have the thank you. Let's see in the chat directly. And here we see, oh team, we have a bad review from John Bad Review. So our workflow is now working and it's live. So every time someone will fill the form, it will work correctly.
Now here we are in the editor, so we can add more things. Maybe you want to add other steps to your workflow. So here you can search for it. Uh, for example, you want to send a mail or you want to add it to a spreadsheet. You have a lot of options available. And another interesting thing is you can go to executions and you will see every executions of your workflow, what happened, and you have the line. So because it was a no in the type form, it goes to the false condition and it sends the bad review message. When you go back to the dashboard, you can also go to credentials and here you will see all the credentials that you added to this particular workflow. You can add some here and delete or edit here, but you can also reuse those credentials in all the workflows you are using. So it's very useful and handy. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. Please hit the like button to help others discover it. Let us know in the comments what open source services you'd like us to make tutorials on in the following videos. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to not miss the upcoming videos. See you soon. Bye bye.